Is it necessary for you to have an altar on your journey? There's the question that came in. Welcome to Ayo from Sisters Kingdom. It's me, your queen, Nanaya Sankofa in your area. How are you doing, family? I pray all is well with you on your spiritual path. We give thanks for life. So the question that came in. Not sure. So the question um, that came in was, is it necessary for you or for some people to have an altar in their house? I don't want to force anybody to do anything. I always say, listen to your spirits, listen to your ancestors, listen to your intuition and listen carefully. But still, we are here to talk. I take you all on my journey here and I share my experience and when you can relate, it's okay. So, when my journey started, my spirits told me that I need an altar. I have two altars for my water spirit and an ancestral spirit. I have the ancestral calling at the same time, I'm a marina. So I have these two altars. That is me. How you do your own. That is how your spirit or how your ancestors want it. We are not, we are not, we don't have the same ancestors. My journey is different than yours. What is the benefit of having an altar? The benefit of having an altar, an altar is a place that you can run to in time of need. An altar is a sacred place. And now people out there, please don't come for me. It's like, oh, it's demonic and it's evil. Trust me. Even when you go to churches, they have altar on day. When you go to the Catholic church, you see, when you enter, some people will call it a table. It's an altar. Okay. A lot of churches call it a puppet or call it whatever that you want is an altar. You get to people's house, they will tell you that it's not an altar. A friend once told me that uh, where she have placed the the the, uh, the dead family, their pictures and flowers and a candle that she used to on light on. She was telling me it's not an altar, but it's just a place to remember her ancestors. Hello, are you kidding me? Everybody, actually, almost everybody have an altar. It is necessary for you to have an altar. But when your spirits say no, then it's okay. Because once, um, I think somewhere last week or last week, I was talking about that there are some people who are the living altar. They are their self. <laughs> they, they are an altar. The food that you can serve the spirits, they can eat it. The drink, the alcohol that you use to serve the gods, they drink it yourself. It sounds like a joke, but we have living altars going around. Very strong and powerful people. That is how they are created too. That is how they are. There is nothing you can do about it. They, they, can, they may have a small altar, maybe somewhere at home, but they themselves, they are the altar. And things really happen. I said, we come from different families, different gifts, different calling. So there is no need on our journey actually to be comparing yourself to somebody because it makes no sense. We don't have the same ancestors. We are not coming from the same family. Even when we are from the same family, it's different gifts that have been shared among the chosen ones. So having an altar, I said, where the altar is, the altar is a sacred place. It's not that a place that you go and just be doing anything there, but it's a holy, a sacred, and a secret place for you, for you alone, because an altar is not a fashion. That when the Spirit tells you that you have to create an altar, you just come and create an altar out there in public, that when your friends or when people come and visit you, everybody will be looking at altar like, say, within the shell. No, that is not it. You have to keep your altar sacred, clean. So 
I said, you have to keep your altar sacred, clean, and somehow sacred. Because it only got to do, it has something to do with you and your spirit. Cleanliness is next to godliness. You need to have the time to be cleaning your altar. The only thing that will stop you to have an altar is whereby you know that you don't have the time to be keeping it clean. For practitioners like us, it is a must. And we have to, we need to find the time. Though I have seen some colleagues of me, I've seen some people's altar and I was like, damn, what spirits are these people dealing with? You see, when you see someone's altar, it tells you a lot about the person. You know, I've been to some friends in the past and because we are very close I'll see the altar. I'll see the water that is there. When you lift the water that they served the gods, their ancestors, their deities, it will look like there is smoke in there. I will ask, man, how long this water have been here? Like me, every day. You don't have to do it. I'm telling you about myself. And now don't compare me with, with yourself or with anyone. It is me. It is my calling. It is my journey that I'm sharing with you. I have to change water each and every day. Each and every day because it is my life. Every day I want my, the, my deities to do something new in my life. Every day I want my ancestors to bring freshness in my life. I change the water every day. By mistake, maybe the time can change. Because I do it every morning before I'm going to work. So let's say maybe Saturday I'm not working. Instead for me to maybe change it at let's say very early in the morning at 5 o'clock. It can be possible that I will do that maybe 2 hours later. Because maybe I slept longer. Or 1 hour later. Then food that you serve. Not that the food will spoil. There will be some green things in there. And it will just be on the it will, just, it will just be on the altar that who should come and eat that food? Because when you ask your spirits for something, do they give you things that are spoiled? Smelling things? No, they don't. So having an altar, it comes with a lot of, you need to be committed. Commitments. Can you keep to it? That is also very important. It's not only changing the water, the food, Everything on my altar, I have to clean it. That not every day, but let's say every Saturday is the day because I work. I do other things. I'm not 24-7 in the spirit. I have to clean everything. I have to change things. What I used to cover my altar, I have to change it, wash it. I have to put a new one there. All those things. Do you have the time to do so? Because some people will just be watching things on the internet. And that, if people will talk on YouTube here. You watch and they'll just say it very easy. But I am here to open everything for you. So that you will know the commitment that it comes with. It's not just like, oh, I have an altar. Oh, I have an altar. No. Having an altar, that is the place that you meet your spirit. You have your quiet time. Sometimes I'll just sit in front of my altar, very quiet, on the candle, just quiet. Just quiet. When I'm in need, when I need answers, and I'm at home, bath, don't go in front of the altar smelling like shit. Change your clothes. Mostly I wear white in front of my altar when I'm going to my altar. In time of war, I wore, I wore black. I wear black. On my marine altar, on my water altar, I wear blue or sometimes blue and white. How the spirit will lead me. So an altar is important on our journey. But let your spirit guide you. 
let the spirit guide you don't just do it don't just create an altar because someone told you to or because you just saw it on the internet and you want to have an altar because it is it's cool no it's not that along along the years there will be a connection between you and your altar like in my case like when i travel i cannot carry everything with me and that is actually the saddest thing the last night before I travel, I'll cry. I know my spirits are with me. But there is a connection also between me and my altar. I know everywhere that I go, I invite my spirit. They are with me. It's just a re representation. But knowing that I'm going to leave it behind. So what I do is maybe I take one or two, three things from my altar. And wherever that I travel, I will bring it out. White candle, I always have it with me. So, on our journey, an altar is very important. Depending on what. As I said, I have the ancestral altar. I have uh, the, also the water calling. So, I have my, my altar there. And then I have another, another altar too for um, Great Mother Hekate. And that one, I think it's not for everyone because Mother Hekate is someone who is a, a really um, a big diva, I would say. She, she, <laughs> uh, I don't know how to say it, but for when it comes to some altars, you, you really have to be dedicated. You have to be dedicated. You know, is that sometimes I'll just put something there and maybe something just fall aside, you know. Then she will just call like, oh, look, look at there. Can you clean this or can you change this one for me? You know, a, a, a diva goddess, I, I used to call her sometimes. I'm like, oh, this mother is something else, you know. So what I'm saying is like, you need that time. You need to have a connection. You understand? And one thing is like when you have the space too, that is also very important. You know, when you don't have the space, I have three in my house. You know, when you are somebody, maybe you have you just have a single room or you are living with somebody, I'll be careful. I'll be very careful. Pray and let your spirits or let your ancestors or whatever that you are into direct you how to do it. But I think... When you are staying with somebody in a single room, I will not do that, you know. And then when you have a boyfriend, that one too, you have to be careful because that place needs to be holy. Not that this is your altar is here and you and your man, yeah, or you and your girlfriend will be hmm, just, it's not nice. That's not nice. Find a very nice place that you can have it. Keep it clean. Have the connection with your uh, 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 with your altar. Start with a day, maybe just when it's just five minutes. Before you know, the time will be growing. You know, what you put on the altar, don't fill your altar too much. A lot of people have too much, you know. Then to clean it, they cannot. To keep it clean, they cannot because they have a lot of different, different things. You know, some people use plastic uh, flowers. It catch a lot of dust. You know, I don't put plastic flowers, but it is your choice. It's your choice. I don't want to judge anybody. I don't put plastic flowers on my on my altar. Once a while, before I used to do it, every every weekend I used to get myself like white roses, um, red ro uh, red roses. You know, my water spirit they like white roses a lot. You know, then my ancestors too white roses. Sometimes they like the red rose, fresh. You know, you keep it there for some days. Don't let it spoil that everything is just falling down there. Then No, that's not. Keep it clean, you know. So that is the question that came in that uh, um, I tried to answer. Whether an altar is necessary for everybody who is on this spiritual path? Yes, but it's not a must. When you are lead, lead, guided to have one, for me, I was told that I have to. And it has helped me a lot on my journey. You know, it's my sacred place. It's the place that I talk, I communicate a lot with my ancestors and with my spirits, you know. So I'll stop here by saying much love is me, your queen, and I find your area on Eye of Ancestors Kingdom. Take good care of yourself and we will surely...